Hello everybody, this is John Buck back with another ECE 320 video. Uh, and this one is the example on revisiting linearity. So that one lays out the graphical overview of how to do uh, the linearity proofs, thinking the graphical roadmap. And then this one is an example of applying that roadmap. And particularly the example is the same one I've done in revisiting time invariance that we'll be looking at the modulator system, which is a system that takes an input signal X of N and then its output y of n is that signal x of n multiplied by the cosine of pi over 4n in this example. There could be other frequencies for the modulator, but this is the main idea. And so again, to do a linearity proof, the two things we need to check are scaling and superposition. Uh, so I'm going to start by making a copy of the roadmap from the previous video. If we just go back for the scaling roadmap, I'm going to replace this block s with the modulator system in my new version of the roadmap. So first I take my input, run it through my modulator system to get my output, and then I scale it. And so this output here, y, we know from the, the equation is, make a better equal sign than that, so y of n will be equal to, x, oh, wrong scaling, sorry, x of n cos pi over 4n. Right, so then z of n will be equal to a y of n. Okay, so that's my first branch. Now I need another branch where I put the box, put the pieces in the other order. So I scale first and then put it through the modulator. Okay, so I scale first to make a new input that we'll call uh, f of n. And then I put it through the modulator system. And I call the output of the modulator on the second branch g of n, right? So when my input uh, g of n when my input is x of n, my, my uh, output, I'm sorry, when my input is f of n, my input is output is g of n. So that will be f of n times cosine pi over 4n, because that's what the modulator box does. Right, so I have x is the input, and y is the output, it takes the input and multiplies by cosine pi over 4n, when f of n is the input, the output is g of n, and it takes the same input, takes my input and multiplies by cosine pi over 4n. And so now my key question is, are z and g the same? Right, which is mathematically what that's saying is, do I get the same output if I take an input, put it through the modulator first, and then scale, or if I scale first and then put it through the modulator? So again, in all of these problems, the same overall approach applies that I need to find substitutions and do algebra on z and g until I get back to things I can compare, which is x of n. So if I want to find, say, z of n first, well, I say, well, z of n is equal to a y of n. I already saw that up here. And then my next step will be to plug in for y of n. But I have this equation here. So by plugging this in for y of n, I can finish my equation down here. And so by substitutions, I've gotten my z of n back to something in terms of x of n and the cosine and other things. So this is as far as I can go on the z of n branch. And now I need to do the same thing on the other branch, where I start with g of n with my system equation here. Okay, so I have g of n is equal to f of n times cosine pi over 4n. And now the next question is, well, I need to get this in terms of x where I can compare it. Pause the video for a second and think to yourself, how can I write f of n in terms of x of n? Look at the diagram and see where there's somewhere I could use the diagram to figure out where f of n is equal to x of n. So do that for a second and then come back. Okay, so now that you're back, Hopefully you recognize here, I have, oh, I have the, uh, this input f of n is the scaled version of the original input x of n, right? I take x of n, run it through this, this scaling box here, and I get a times x of n for f of n, so I can now plug this in, this f of n in here, for this one, so it, which is down here, and right? I'm essentially plugging it in right there. 
And so let's do that. So now we've got both branches in term, written in terms of x of n, we can compare them. So again, pause the video for a second and think to yourself, are these two expressions the same? Does z of n equal g of n? Yes, they do. So we can say you know, these two are equal. So the answer up here is yes. So scaling holds. Right, so we have proven the first piece, we've proven scaling of our proof for, for the modulator system. <clears throat> we now need to go through on to superposition, right? We're not done yet. Scaling alone doesn't give us linearity. We have to prove superposition as well. So let's go on and look at that. All right, so my next step is to go back, look at my roadmap here and say I need to draw another copy of this roadmap where the S boxes have been replaced by my modulator, <clears throat> which to save space, I might just abbreviate as M. And then we'll follow through the, fl the flow and the diagrams to get everything in terms of x so we can compare and see if they're the same. So let me get to a clean page and draw the, start drawing that out. Okay, so starting on our modulator system, I have my, from the scaling part of the proof, I have my two signals, x1 and x2 of n. They give me my outputs, y1 and y2 of n, and then I add those two outputs, and I add those two outputs and call it z of n. So I can follow all this through. I, I don't have to draw both halves. I mean, my key question is going to be, do I get the same thing if I do things in the other order? If I add the two outputs, inputs, I'm sorry, add the two inputs and then put them through the modulator, do I get the same thing? But I can follow the x's through now uh, if I want to uh, and then do the other branch. So let me do that. I'll, do, I'll write both these outputs, y1 and y2, in terms of x of n using the description of the modulator back from the earlier pages. Right, so I go back here. This is my system equation for the modulator. Right, so I have z of n. I now have both my outputs in terms of x, and now I'm going to write, well, z, first of all, I know z is y1 plus y2, so let me fill that in. Right, and now that I have that, I can substitute for y1 and y2, because that's, that's what the adder does. It takes these two things and adds them. And now I can substitute for each one to get them in terms of x of n. And I'll just do this right here. I don't need to put it separately at the bottom. Sometimes it's easier, but I'll just put it right below here. So now I've got that whole top branch done where I modulate first and then add the outputs, all done in terms of x1 and x2. Now let's draw the bottom branches and then we can follow that through. So again, the main idea in the bottom branch is we're going to do things in the other order. We're going to add, add things first and then feed through the modulator system. Okay, so first I've added the two inputs, x1 and x2, I'll call that new signal that's the sum of those two f of n. And then I'm going to feed that into the modulator system. So I'm going to make a little more room here first. OK, and so now the output, when f of n is the input, we, we, we call the output g of n, right? which will be the input f of n times cosine pi over 4n, because that's what a modulator does. All right, so now the question is, my, now I can put up my key question. Is z of n equal to g of n? Right, and what that's mathematically saying is, do I get the same output if I take two inputs, run them through the modulator separately, then add them, or, which is the top branch, right up here, or if I take the two inputs and add them first and then run them through the modulator, do I get the same thing? So to figure that out, we already did the top branch in terms of x1 and x2. We need to work through the bottom branch. So to do that, we need to say, well, I need to get this in terms of x of n. I'm going to need to do that for f. So let me go figure out, oh, here's where I can find f of n in terms of x. Let me plug that in. Right, so here's my, old, uh, you know, that was my ulterior motive for making this line longer than it really needed to be, is after I've, I've plugged these in, or I want to have room to write this after I've plugged it in. So now I have f of n in terms of, x of n, so I can take this f and plug this equation in here to get g in terms of the two, the, uh, the x1 and x2, so let me do that. Right, so I have x1 plus x2 times cosine pi over 4n, and now I need to just distribute the cosine through to get it in the simplest form. I'm going to give myself a little more room to do that. I'm going to scoot the page over a little bit here. And now, at last, we've arrived at the moment of reckoning. We say I've got g of n in terms of x1 and x2. 
and z of n in terms of x1 and x2. So pause the video for a moment and ask yourself, are those two things the same now that I've gotten them written in terms of x1 and x2 so I can compare them? All right, so now you're back. Look, hopefully you looked and said, yes, these are equal. Right, the two, two outputs are the same, whether I modulate each one first and then add them, or add them first and then modulate. So since these two are equal, that means that scaling holds. So let me shift my page back over. Yes, yeah, so now I've proven both scaling and superposition. So if I go back to where I, right, I have, I've successfully proven both of these properties. So maybe I'll use happy green for each one. Right, so this tells me since I have scaling and superposition, the modulator system is linear. So again, this is, you know, Another way to solve the problem, some people find it easier to see this sort of roadmap first to keep track of why we're doing all the, the steps in the algebra and the handout. Uh, so I wanted to, to put this up here. I know people have liked the time invariant video too. Uh, so I hope you, you found this helpful uh, to have both the, the roadmap and then this example applied to the modulator. I'm going to stop now. This video is plenty long enough. Uh, and I wish you good luck proving things that are linear and time invariant.